The introduction of the 1550 crawler to the case line of construction equipment added another product to the list of those powered by hydrostatics. Whether you handle crawlers, excavators, trenchers, skid steers, or loaders, one thing holds true about hydraulic power. The systems must be kept clean, spotlessly clean, in order to achieve the productivity that they're capable of. It's fairly well accepted that it's imperative to keep the hydraulic system of a machine clean, but this is doubly important for the hydrostatic drive system. Hydrostatic transmissions are extremely vulnerable to damage caused by dirty fluid. Levels of acceptable cleanliness in a hydraulic system are not acceptable in a hydrostatic system. So, how clean is clean? Hydraulic component analysts report that most transmission and component failures result from a breakdown of fluid cleanliness. In short, the hydraulic or hydrostatic oil becomes contaminated. Contamination, simply put, is any foreign material in the hydraulic fluid. It can be solid, liquid, or gas. It can be metallic or fibrous. It can be oxidation, sludge, gel, or water. The common problem being nearly all contamination is too subtle to be detected by human senses. Hydraulic engineers generally agree that most abrasive wear of hydraulic components is caused by ultrafine silt particles as small as 10 microns in size. Compare this to the diameter of the average human hair, which is about 75 microns. With the sophisticated hydraulic systems of today's construction equipment, if you can feel, see, or smell anything in your drained oil, the system may already be ruined. Contaminated hydraulic fluid can be caused by several factors. It can be built in during the assembly process, system generated by working parts within the hydraulic system, maintenance generated by anyone opening up the system when maintenance and repairs are made, ingested from the environment by things like reservoir breathers and cylinder rod seals. Contamination implanted in the system during manufacturing can include weld spatter, coarse sand, paint flakes, and metal slivers from tightened fittings. J.I. Case manufacturing facilities have installed measures that greatly reduce built-in contaminants. For example, Components provided by outside suppliers must conform to established cleanliness specifications. Components are uncapped only when ready for assembly. Oil is pre-filtered before being added to the machine. Personnel on the manufacturing floor are trained in contamination control procedures and pay close attention to quality control. Finished hydrostatic machines do not leave the plant until they've been run through a slave filter system. This circulates the hydrostatic fluid through the external filters of the system, removing contaminants. But when a piece of machinery comes off the assembly line and into the hands of the customer, the possibilities for contamination have really just begun. For example, every time the machine is started, it's exposed to elements that stand to pollute the hydraulic oil. This is also true every time the machine is opened up for maintenance or servicing. Anytime a metal fitting is tightened or loosened, microscopic bits of metal are released into the system. If a fitting is carelessly over-tightened, entire chips of metal can be sheared off into the system. If any hydraulic components are wiped out with a shop rag, lint or threads may be left behind. In any given operating system, whenever two surfaces come in contact, wear particles that cause damage are constantly being generated. Even new oil, fresh from a properly stored container, can be contaminated. So even adding oil can induce contamination. Hydraulic cylinders are a source of contamination. Once a new machine is put in service, the cylinder rods will be coated with dirt. As the rods retract, some of this dirt can be drawn into the clean cylinder. Dust, bacteria, grease, and other pollutants can work their way past valve spools, pump and motor seals, and even into tanks vented to the atmosphere. 
Once introduced into the system, these particles spread to other areas and cause damage. Pollutants work their way into the moving clearances and grind away at surfaces. This actually produces more contaminants, resulting in a chain reaction of wear. Hydraulic component manufacturers report that dirt is responsible for at least 75% of malfunctions and unsatisfactory component performance. There are two results of contaminated oil, a degradation failure or a catastrophic failure. Degradation failure is subtle and difficult to detect. It is time-related because it is a wear process producing a slow deterioration of component performance. Dirt in the oil can score finely finished surfaces, eroding components and causing leakage. A catastrophic failure is event-related, as when a component suddenly fails to function. This might be the jamming of a check or relief valve, or when a particle gets into a place where it cannot be tolerated, like dirt entering a high-precision piston pump causing major damage and pump failure. Contaminants can also chemically break down the hydraulic fluid, affecting the lubricating properties of the oil. These two surfaces, the piston shoes and the cam plate on this hydrostatic pump, rely on a film of oil to avoid direct metal-to-metal -metal contact between them. Now, if contaminants have changed the chemical properties of the oil, this film can break down causing these surfaces to wear. Consider that a typical piston pump turns at 2,500 revolutions per minute. It wouldn't take long for a cam plate like this to wear down to one that looks like this. The fight against contaminated hydraulic oil sounds like a losing battle. All you have to do is sit on your machine and start it up, and the contamination process begins. If the contamination generated by internal moving parts doesn't get you, the pollutants introduced during servicing and maintenance will. It's true. Contamination is a way of life in a hydraulic machine, but it can be controlled. The first steps to controlling it are learning to identify it and measuring its levels. There are two types of contamination, microscopic and visible. Microscopic contamination obviously cannot be seen and can only be found with special tests and equipment. Visible contamination can be found by sight, touch, and odor. Visible or not, the effects of contaminants can sometimes be easily detected during routine maintenance checks. Inspect for leaking around cylinder rod seals. Check for sticking control valve spools. When changing the oil, check for particles or foreign material in the hydraulic fluid. Also check the bottom of the hydraulic reservoir for sediment. Drain fluid that is very dark in color or that has an odor may have been exposed to very high operating temperatures brought about by oil contamination. Hydraulic fluid that is white in color may have water in it. This can corrode piping and other components. A hydraulic system that runs at a high temperature during operation can also indicate contaminants. Other times, the damaging effects of polluted oil are not so easily detected. Even while there may not be any obvious physical symptoms of contamination, your system could well be on its way to a catastrophic or degradation failure. The best and most reliable way to monitor particle contamination is to have the oil professionally analyzed. Case dealers have a service available to them called System Guard. System Guard measures the particulate contamination levels in hydraulic oil. The way it works is simple. Using System Guard kit number two, the one for hydraulic and transmission analysis, Take a sample from the hydrostatic or hydraulic oil in your machine and send it to System Guard where it will be analyzed. A printed report is sent back to the customer and to the dealer. This report gives a detailed look at the particulate contaminant level found in the oil. The report is easy to read and gives corrective actions if necessary. If samples are taken regularly, it can set up a trend analysis of your unit meaning it can track the condition of your machine through its life cycle. This kind of information can be a forewarning of problems before they occur. 
It is the best and most reliable method for measuring contaminant levels. Now that we've identified and seen ways of measuring contamination, let's look at how we can help prevent it. First off, the name of the game is filtering. The function of a hydraulic filter is to reduce the contamination level in the system reliably and economically. Dirt is going to get into the system, so the key is to transport it to the filter and trap it, then change the filter. The filter is doing the job against contamination when the filter can trap dirt at a higher rate than dirt is introduced into the system. The filter is not effective if the contamination rate builds faster than the filter's trapping rate. One of the most important things you can do, especially to combat implanted particles from manufacturing, is to change the filters on your new machine after the first 20 hours of operation. This gives enough time for any particles to be circulated to one of the system filters and trapped. When replacing filters, use only the manufacturer's recommended filter. Hydrostatic systems are too sensitive to take a chance on an inferior filter. Case filters are designed and manufactured to your specific machine's engineering standards. Buying an off-brand filter is no place to try and save a couple of bucks. It is essential to follow the recommended filter and fluid change intervals found in your operator and service manual. The filter is designed to catch and hold impurities in the oil, but the filter can only hold these particles for so long, and eventually if the filter receives a flow surge, some of these particles can break free and pass through the filter and circulate back into the system. Regular filter changes assure the best chance of preventing these particles from escaping from the filter. Environmental factors, such as extremely dusty conditions, will require more frequent filter changes. The more pollutants present in your working conditions, the greater the chance for contamination. Another way you can help prevent contamination is to be sure the correct service procedures are followed when your machine is opened up for repair or maintenance. Exposed ports and hose ends should be capped at all times. Avoid leaving any part of the hydrostatic system open for any length of time while servicing. Also, be sure the caps you install are clean. Always thoroughly clean the exterior of any component before disassembly. Opening filthy pumps and motors is an invitation to contamination. If a new or used hose or component is to be installed, it should be cleaned and blown out with dry pressurized air, as even new parts out of the box can carry pollutants. If you're servicing one part of a hydrostatic system, make sure other components of that system are operating properly. In a closed loop hydrostatic system, if one part has been damaged by contaminants, the others will be contaminated as well. Because of this, steps need to be taken to make sure the entire system is free of contamination before reassembly. Once again, while hydraulic systems and components must be kept clean, Hydrostatic systems must be kept spotlessly clean because they are much less tolerant of dirt and contaminants. The only way to ensure a clean hydrostatic system is to disassemble the hydrostatic components, including hoses, motors, valves, lines and pumps, and wash each part individually. Labor intensive? Yeah, but it's the only way to thoroughly clean a hydrostatic system. Wash each part thoroughly with a clean solvent to prevent the leftover oil from working as a catalyst and generating new contaminants. Hoses, tubes, and reservoirs should be rinsed with a high pressure washer. Then, dry all components inside and out with pressurized air. One area of a hydrostatic machine that is commonly neglected is the oil cooler. Take a look at this cooler. This is an actual cutaway of a polluted oil cooler taken off of a vibratory roller that had a catastrophic hydrostatic failure. The intricate network of tubes inside the cooler make it very difficult to remove contamination by flushing or cleaning, so it is best to either replace the cooler or take it to a cooler repair shop to have it professionally cleaned. There are no shortcuts to cleaning a contaminated hydrostatic system. All pollutants must be removed. If this is not done now, you can be sure that these contaminants will become a problem in the future. 
Today's hydrostatic systems are built with extremely close tolerances. For example, look at the precise fit in this pump between the piston and the bore in the cylinder block. Any contaminants remaining in the system after a servicing procedure will have to work their way to the filter by passing closely machined mating services like these. In short, if there's dirt in the system, it will do damage. So when correcting a contamination-related failure, be sure that all other components of the system receive attention as well. If you notice evidence of contamination in the hydraulic system of your machine, there is a tool that can help clean and flush the system without disassembling the components. This tool is the portable filter or filter buggy. The filter buggy works like a kidney machine, externally removes impurities from the blood. When attached to the open loop hydraulic system, the filter buggy acts as an external filter capable of removing contaminants from the hydraulic oil. It's the easiest, least expensive, and most efficient means of cleaning the hydraulic system. But remember this, the filter buggy will clean and flush the open loop hydraulic system, but will not thoroughly clean the closed loop hydrostatic system between the piston pump and motor. This is because in a closed loop hydrostatic system, oil is not continuously circulated back to the reservoir as in an open loop system. This circulating action is necessary for the filter buggy to work properly. Hydrostatic systems, when polluted, need to be disassembled and cleaned one component at a time. After cleaning and reassembling the components, the filter buggy can be used to help flush out the hydrostatic system, but it is not capable of thoroughly cleaning the entire closed loop system when used alone. The way the filter buggy works is simple. The buggy is hooked in line to either the hydraulic or hydrostatic system. When flushing a hydraulic system, the cylinders are fully extended and retracted under no load. When flushing a hydrostatic system, the machine is safely raised off the ground and the hydrostatic circuits are run through their cycles. These actions cause oil to be circulated from the machine to the filters mounted on the filter buggy. These filters trap contaminants and keep them from re-entering the system. Sediment on the bottom of the reservoir is mixed into suspension in the oil so that it can be removed by the portable filter. The filter buggy should be used in any of these instances. When there is any evidence of contamination in the oil. When there are symptoms present which could be caused by contamination. And after major repairs to the hydrostatic system. For complete details on filter bugging, see your service manual. After the machine has had a service repair, it's highly advisable to change the filters earlier than the next scheduled filter change interval. This way, any contaminants produced by the service procedure will be flushed through the system and removed by the filters as quickly as possible. Hydraulic power for construction equipment has many benefits but it's imperative that the system remain clean. Contamination will enter and probably is already in your machine sensitive hydraulic system. How quickly it can be removed before it does damage will determine the reliability and uptime of your machine.